Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe plugin tutorial. This tutorial applies sort of for After Effects and Premiere, but as you can see by the title, today we're going to be porting our After Effects plugin over to Premiere. There's actually not a ton of steps that are required to take in order to actually have it appear in the program, and then we'll also need to recode and refactor some of our code in order to get it to work with different types of uh, color spaces inside of Premiere. So today we're going to be taking this Vibrancy plugin that we created previously, which add, allows us to make a nice tint. Of course, it still has its bugs, but it's a nice simple plugin, and we're gonna take it and make sure we can then use it inside of Premiere. Before we get started, I do wanna remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link. We're gonna be following this little guide here I've made, which is just bits of the code that we need to integrate. And I'm gonna be going over that in pretty good detail today. So make sure you download that code and check it out in the GitHub link down below and follow us there for coding updates. Also in the description, make sure you follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member, of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us financially for making these tutorials for you guys, you can also get cool perks, um, become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. A link for that is in the description. So before we get into the nitty gritty, I do want to describe that there are some resources in the SDK guide that will really help you in making Premiere plugins. There are some main differences and you can of course read through all the specific differences here. For example, the way time works is slightly different uh, and we're not ever using smart effects in Premiere. We're currently just using the render uh, function, which we have already integrated inside of our vibrancy plugin. Uh, as you can see here, we use a render function to render an 8 or 16-bit example in After Effects. Luckily, we use the same exact thing in Premiere. There's a lot of details, and a lot of these nuances can actually cause problems sometimes. For example, sometimes uh, Premiere will request multiple frames to render in a single frame for different resolutions, or for different playbacks. So there's a lot of little things and as well some missing suites which have different names. Instead of saying world transform suite uh, pointer to copy, we just say pf underscore copy. And there's a lot of these which you'll kind of learn as you look through the premier examples uh, that are cross-platform already in the SDK guide as well as this tutorial. And that does remind me, inside of the sample projects, there are some that work in both Premiere and After Effects. They've added a lot of recent support for the Premiere stuff. Uh, SDK Noise in particular goes over as well how to do YUV rendering. This isn't something we're going explicitly into depth on rendering in this tutorial, uh, but we're gonna definitely go into depth in the future on things like color spaces and LUTs. So our plugin works fine in After Effects. Let's port it to Premiere. First up, we need to load up our project. And I'll go ahead and stop running this. Uh, the first thing we can do, just to realize, we can debug directly into Premiere the same way we can debug directly into After Effects. To do this, we just have to right click on our project and go to the properties, and then make sure you're in your debug or release configuration, or both, it's up to you. And under debugging, under the configuration properties, we can change our command from the After Effects exe, and uh, let's go ahead and just change that to whatever version of Premiere we want to test in and select the exe file for Premiere itself. Now, whenever we debug or try and run this, it's now going to load up Premiere. And this will also allow us to do things like set breakpoints and see all the detailed information as we test our plugin. Okay, so now let's compare what I have here in our little upgrade guide uh, and start integrating it into our current Vibrancy plugin. The first thing we need to do is focus on our header file because inside of our header file, we define a lot of important things. So let's go ahead and go into our vibrancy.h file. And if you're not uh, remembering it very well, this is where we enumerate all of our parameters for our user interface. This is where we create a nice struct, which allows us to send data between the render function and change things. And then we also have just various other defaults and things, as well as external files we can include to make sure we have certain abilities and libraries. So the first thing we wanna do inside of this H file is to include PR SDK After Effects support .h. So if I go ahead and add this to my list of include files, this is gonna be super important for allowing us to access things like the color channels and things that are supported only in Premiere. Premiere doesn't usually use RGB, 
uh, and we don't necessarily just code for 8, 16, and 32 bits per channel. We have something called VUIA, which is basically a special color space that relies on a luminance value, an alpha value, and a blue and or red tint, which can be positive or negative. Again, this is all kind of complicated stuff. I'm gonna make a full in-depth tutorial on this in the future because it is quite a bit to wrap your head around at first. But once you start understanding how color spaces and things work, making things work between Premiere and After Effects becomes much easier. So now we've included PR SDK AE support. Next up, we have these type def structs we need to add to our header file. What these are, are the basic four uh, color formats that our images can be used in inside of Premiere. We have BGRA, VUIA, and BGRA32, and VUIA32. Again, this just stands for blue, green, red, and alpha. And this stands for, well, basically luminance, red tint, blue tint, and alpha. And of course, we have their properties defined. I'm not necessarily gonna type this up from scratch, but you can easily just copy and paste this into one project to the next, because that's typically what I do. And I'm also gonna make sure these are within our end if for our vibrancy.h. The reason we're putting these in here is that so our C++ file will recognize these other pixel formats, which are required uh, in order to make Premiere work nicely. So again, we just wanna include that Premiere header file and then all of these structures so that we can have access to all these types of colors as well as the different functions and things built into the Premiere SDK. Now we're gonna go now into our global setup inside of our C++ file. Our global setup is where we set up our plugin itself. It's where it gets the, the version defined as well as some things like whether or not we're going to use deep color aware, use smart effects, multi-threading, GPU acceleration, and those kind of things all get defined in here. What we want to put in here is a special check if our app ID is Premiere. The way we check if the uh, application we're running in is in Premiere is by saying in data and then a pointer to Apple underscore ID. And if that's equal to PRMR, that's Premiere. If you wanted to add a specific case for AE, you could just add an else statement to that and you'll assume that you're in After Effects because there's not really a third program that this is going to work for. So if you're inside of Premiere, what are we going to do? Well, looking inside of here, we basically are going to add our supported pixel formats. And yes, we did just define them in our header file, but now in our global setup, we need to basically tell Premiere or tell the plugin that these four formats, VUIA32, 8, and BGRA32 and 8, are all formats that we're going to be using. And we're basically going to clear them and then add them. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this code inside of my check of whether or not we're in Premiere. And actually, it looks like I'm getting an error uh, when we're doing this. So I think I'm going to also add the AEFX Suite Helper and that should help give us access to the sweet scoper. So let me, so I'm gonna definitely make sure I add that to our guide here as well. So now we've defined all of our pixel formats. Now how do we actually send it the commands to render and appear inside of Premiere? Well, if you're following along, you actually have this bit of code already in your Vibrancy plugin. If we scroll down just above our effect main or our entry point, you can see we actually already have something here, which is called vignette, Adobe vignette, and under sample plugins. So if you were to actually run this, you would see that there's a sample plugin called vignette in Premiere. And indeed, if I go to my video effects and sample plugin, you can see we have vignette, but if we apply it, you can see it's just called vignette, but you can see it's the same exact thing as our color vibrancy plugin. So we already have the code which allows it to appear inside of Premiere. All we have to do then is change these values. And of course, if this code isn't in your project, you can simply copy and paste it inside of it. This is basically, instead of using the R file, which is where you define the match name and the effect name for After Effects, we do it inside of this extern C DLL export. So all we have to do is change the information. We'll call this vibrancy. Uh, we can call it NT Vibrancy for the match name. And we want this to go into the category NT Productions. And sometimes you'll notice if you have, say, a space or no space between your uh, 
your name, you can have the two different folders of your plugin. So make sure it's in the correct uh, named folder. So go ahead and stop this. And now let's see, we got vibrancy, NT vibrancy, NT productions. Let's go ahead and rerun this inside of Premiere and make sure it appears the way we want. So now we can go down into video effects, NT no space productions, and you can see we have vibrancy. It looks like I have a couple of vignette examples that need to be fixed. But now you can see we're just getting black and uh, but our plugin is appearing correctly displaying vibrancy and all of the properties. Now we need to know how we can sort of create the same pixels or same process as we did with the After Effects version of this plugin. So like I said, we're going to be using the render function that is built in here to this vibrancy plugin. In this case, it's doing the rendering for After Effects and it's also going to do the rendering for Premiere. The only difference is we're going to need to add a check so that we know which program is which because we can't run these Premiere functions to process After Effects and vice versa. We can't uh, use After Effects code to process the Premiere images. So if you remember inside of the global setup, we had this if statement which checked if we were in Premiere. I'm gonna take that and down in render, we're going to create one section of code for After Effects and the other for Premiere. So after we have all, all of our variables set up here, this is where our code starts. These two um, bits of code here are for After Effects. So I wanna say paste this. And I'm gonna say if it's not Premiere, then we'll run this. Else, it definitely is Premiere. So if we get into this main function here and we recognize, hey, the ID is not Premiere, run the After Effects code. Otherwise, it is Premiere, and now we're gonna wanna run the Premiere code. So if we know that the program is Premiere, we're gonna paste all of this here. Now, let's go over what exactly this is. The first thing we're doing is bringing back up our sweet scoper, which essentially allows us to, uh, in this case, create a variable which is gonna store our pixel format. And we need our pixel format so we know what bits per channel or sort of special color space this Premiere footage is using. Different pieces of footage in Premiere use different uh, color spaces. It's not like After Effects where you can choose eight, 16, or 32 bits per channel. So what we're doing is we're setting up a variable called pixel format suite. This is going to allow us to access that suite and understand what the pixel format of our particular video this is applied to. Then we'll create a variable called pixel format or destination pixel format, which is of type PR pixel format. And by default, we're just gonna set this value to something arbitrary. In this case, a BGRA value uh, in eight bits. So then we have uh, our, then we have our pixel format suite, which again, references all the abilities to get pixel formats and create pixel worlds and that kind of thing. And we're going to get the pixel format of our output image and store it in a variable called destination pixel format. Currently we set an initial value for this, but now we're going to override it with whatever the pixel format of our image is. The more you work with this stuff, the more it will make sense over time. Uh, it might look like a lot of mumbo jumbo right now, but the more you kind of read it and the more you do this, the more you understand what each of these lines of code do. We're also going to initialize our iterate eight suite. This is going to allow us to do iteration functions in the future. We're not gonna actually be programming the Premiere uh, pixel by pixel changing functions in this tutorial, but I'll briefly mention how you can go about them. You will need this though, and we'll cover it in full in another tutorial on how to basically convert your RGB functions into any of these other formats. Then we simply create a switch statement. In the After Effects version, we use an if statement to check if the world output is deep, aka a deep color 16 bits, or if it's if it's not, it's eight bits. Uh, there's also sometimes a, a time when you want to control eight, 16, and 32 bits in After Effects by which you would use a switch statement. Now we're gonna use a switch statement for Premiere because we have four different pixel formats. We have, again, RGBA, eight bits and 32 bits, and VUIA, eight and 32. So we're going to use a switch statement on our destination pixel format. Remembering that our destination pixel format is the pixel format we get from our video basically the video it's applied to. Now our four switches are going to be exactly these. 
PR pixel format BGRA4448U four, 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 and etc. These are not the ones we specifically defined uh, inside of our H file. These are going to be used for when we're actually doing like pixel conversions between RGB and them. These formats in particular are referring to the ones inside of our global setup that we added support for. So these are the more specific pixel formats that are integrated already into the SDK. And these ones, which we'll use in the future, are going to be ones we use to just create variables representing pixels. So we add a case for each of these formats and inside of here is where you would put in your code. For example, if we wanted to do an iterate function, we would paste an iterate function from here and we would instead say maybe tint function instead of eight, we would say BGRA 8U. And then you can do this for each of the examples. And again, in a future tutorial, I'm going to go over all the differences in how you can basically port your individual functions to Premiere because it's not necessarily straightforward in this portion of the render. Uh, for example, if you want to use like transform world or fills, it all works a little bit differently in Premiere. But again, if you are curious about all of those, some of them are listed in this missing suites and in the guide, as well as in the example projects that work in both AE and Premiere. But that is pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. I wanted to go over the very basics on how you can port your plugin to start working for Premiere. If you're already ready to take the next steps without just what I've presented in this video, you can try and create the same functions we previously created, like this gamma or tint function, but create them for the other pixel formats. You're gonna learn a lot along the way if you take this route on your own. And a lot of the things that I've learned over dozens and dozens of hours of experimenting and learning how to convert between these pixel formats and how to convert functions, you're going to learn pretty quickly how it all works. But I will have a tutorial on, in the future on this particular subject and much more coming up in all the plugin video series. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out this guide code so you can start upgrading your own plugin. Make sure you follow us there on GitHub for coding updates and in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, hang out with a lot of our paid members and top participators. A lot of these guys are really smart in scripting, extensions, and plugins, even expressions, and can help you out as well. If you'd like to help support us and become one of those people as well, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, get cool perks like uh, badges, weekly VIP streams, code in advance, and much more. Link for that is in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone, we'll see you next time.